Hawk and I, pretty much as kids, were always nicknames were Animal and Hawk. We've known each other since we were eight years old. And uh, we decided to get into the sport of professional wrestling. We wanted to do something that was kind of a motto of one of our, our, one of our favorite movies was The Road Warrior. That was one of our favorite movies. And we said, you know, everybody's always in typical wrestling tights and this and that and wrestling. I said, what can we do to, uh, to change our gimmick? And Hawk says, hey, I got it. Animal, won't you have a regular mohawk and I'll have a double mohawk so it looks like we plug into each other, you know? So that's, the, and then, so that's how the haircuts came about. Our style is 110% nonstop, go at them. We come at you hard, we hit you hard, we want you to hit, me, hit us hard back. My favorite move, and I was known to do out throughout time, was press slam. <clears throat> Before a top rope broke one time and it landed on my shoulder and I dislocated it in the, middle of a, in the middle of a match, I had my manager yank it out and put it back in place. But uh, I press slam, I was known to press slam all the big guys. I press slam Killer Khan, who was 330 pounds over my head for three repetitions. I did Terry Gordy, who was 300 pounds. I, did, I was the guy that was known, I pressed Hulk Hogan in Japan when Hulk was 325. I was the only guy ever to press Hulk Hogan. We were the only guys ever to press Crusher and Bruiser, who were in the wrestling business, phenoms, never went off their feet for 15, 20 years. And we press slammed both of them at the end of their career. I think wrestling fans, when I talk to a lot of wrestling fans around the country, as far as going as a most favorable match or most rem memorable match they have of us, usually the war games scenarios come about, which are two rings inside of a giant cage. And you have to, you know, and one of our patent, my, my patent moves and my partner's was to dive across both rings and give a guy a flying shoulder tackle. The worst, out, the worst injury that I had in this wrestling business was I had orbital rim surgery. Uh, a guy landed on my head in the ring, a guy named the Warlord, big guy, he's from Minnesota too. Um, <clears throat> he landed on my head in such a way that my eye had popped out and it popped back in, but when I went too far, too far it, my orbit was totally shattered. It went in too deep, so they had to pull it back out to its original spot and they operated through my mouth and through my natural crease of my eye so there was no scarring, but it was the worst thing that ever happened to me in my life. The Japan ones were pretty special. They went on a belt in another country. Um, I think winning in our first world championship was pretty, pretty, pretty hot itself. I mean, that was pretty special. You know, here you are in a business that you look and I watched at the time and I watched Hulk Hogan and then I watched, you know, uh, Superfly Jimmy Snuka and I watched all these guys flying and I said, man, <clears throat> here I go in my first tournament and Hawk and I win the belts. So we, you know, we, we, we have right away went from zeros to all of a sudden now we're the top tag team in the business and we have been for the last how many years? 18 years. You know, everybody's trying to emulate us. There's been many of uh, imitators, no duplicators. If you want to get in wrestling business, I advise you to be in tip top shape. I advise you to be in the best shape of your life. I advise you to shut your mouth and listen. Become a student of this business right away because that's the only way you're going to succeed. Listen to the guys that have got experience and be very respectful. Don't think just because you worked out and you were uh, UFC champion or you're a national karate champion that you come in and deserve to be a wrestling champion because there's a lot of guys in the wrestling. There's a lot of tough guys in this business. There's a lot of great guys in this business, but it's very much a pecking order, very much a respect thing. If you go in the wrestling business and think you know it all right away, you're going to get shot down right away. You're never going to get a break. So respect and attitude is number one. You got to be patient too, because it's not going to come the next day you get in. Just don't think because you work out and you take, you go through a wrestling camp that you deserve to be the world champ the next day. I mean, timing, charisma, everything, being able to stand there and just like Hawk and I were able to do and just look at the people like this and get a reaction out of them. Or like Hogan, when he waves his hand and does the thing to the ear and get people to cheer, doesn't come to everybody. Or Rock raising his eyebrow, you know, that doesn't come to everybody. That comes to few and far between. That's why only a few guys make it to the legend status in professional wrestling. When our career is at its end, or when the fat lady sings, as everybody else says, you know, it's all over when the fat lady sings. I hope for our, that we will be remembered as the greatest tag team of all time. Let me tell you something right now. I'm the animal, my partner, the Hawk. We're not some Johnny come lately in the sport of professional wrestling. If you think you're going to get in a ring on your first wrestling match and try to make a name for yourself and come try to beat us, you got another thing to think about, pal. We are the Road Warriors. We are the Legion of Doom. We've been the best tag team in the history of professional wrestling, and we're not handing that up to anybody. That's what I'd say to my opponent. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs>